Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. This is my second video on Mason's gain flow formula, which is used with these signal graphs to find the transfer function. You follow simple rules and you come to a transfer function. In the last video, I used a very simple example and therefore we weren't able to fully explore the gain formula. As you can see, this example contains quite a few loops, both a feedback and feed forward loops, and it would be considered to be a fairly complex control system. This graph would represent a significant complexity in the control system. So let us begin by finding the forward paths. The forward paths are those that go from the input RS to the output YS. And we have listed three of them below, showing the various branches that we take to get there. There is this straight through branch, which is the first one that follows a straight line. And then there is another one that when it reaches this point, it goes up here and comes back down and comes out. So it bypasses G3 and G4. And then the third one comes along here and goes up here to G8 thereby bypassing one of the nodes. So there's the straight through, and then there's these two other bypass to give three possible forward paths to get from RS to YS. So then the next thing we need to do is find the feedback loops. So this is looking for the arrows going in the other direction from YS to RS. And the feedback loops are the simplest one being the one that's shown here where it just goes back. So it's basically only two minus H4, G4. That would be the simplest one. And then here we see that we have two because with this H, one here, we can go that away and come around, or we can actually go all the way up to G8 and come around. So we get two loops with that one, and with some of the others, we get two, because here we can come around, and instead of going straight, we can come up and come back down. So we're going to get actually two loops with H2 minus H2 as well. So that's why we actually have got eight feedback loops listed below. So you can trace those for yourself until you're happy that they agree with what's shown in the diagram. Okay, so the next uh, procedure now is to find non-touching loops. These are loops that the have no common branch or no common segment. And as we can see here, the L3, which is minus the H4 and G4, does not touch the minus H2, which goes up here and comes around. So, in other words, when you trace the loop out, there is no common uh, branch. So clearly the minus H4 and the G4 are sort of inside of the loop, but they don't, they're not, not, none of these parts here are actually part of the loop. So that's the meaning of non-touching loops. No uh, segment of the loop is shared between two non-touching loops. So they're completely different loops. So um, you can now go and check these other three 
to make sure that you agree that we have uh, these three non-touching loops as shown here. The next uh, procedure is to write the determinant. Now the determinant of the graph is always 1 minus the sum of all loops plus the sum of the products of all combinations of the, the two non-touching loops that you can find in your graph. So we've written it out there for you in terms of the loop numbers that we listed in the before screen. So you can take a moment and copy it down and fiddle with it till you're satisfied that uh, we have um, three products as shown here. Three products of the non-touching loops. And uh, you can satisfy yourself that there are no three non-touching loops. Because we would have to have three products. We would have to have the three loops multiplied together if we had three. So let us continue. What's the next step? The next step now is to find the cofactor. And this is perhaps the most difficult one of all. But it needn't be so. Uh, the cofactor, uh, you have a cofactor for each forward path. And it's just the determinant with all the loops that touch that particular forward path removed. So clearly, clearly, for the first path which goes straight through from RS to YS, all the loops are going to touch that. So, since all the loops touch that, when we remove them, what's left is just the 1. So, the, the, the delta, the cofactor delta is only going to be 1 for loop 1 and for loop, sorry, for path 1 and for path 3. You can see that all of the loops touch path 1 and path 3. So when they're all removed, delta 1 and delta 3 will be simply 1. But for path 2, the L3 does not touch it. And as you can see once again, if we point it out up here so, the, the path that goes above here and comes around completely escapes these uh, uh, branches inside here. So this loop actually does not touch this forward path. So for path forward two, path two of the, of the forward uh, paths, this path in here, minus H4, G4, does not touch it at all. So we have to write the delta two is 1 minus L3, or when it's expanded, 1 plus H4, G4. And the sign changes because the H4, G4 is negative anyway. So that's why we have to change the sign. All right, so we put it all together now, and we have path 1 plus path 2 times the cofactor, and then path 3, remembering that Path 1 has a cofactor 2, and path 3 has a cofactor, but it's eliminated from our expression because it's simply 1, and 1 multiplied by anything. So it would be really P1 cofactor 1, P2 cofactor 2, P3 cofactor 3, and then right over the whole determinant of the whole graph. So that's the shorthand way of writing it. Obviously, we could go back and substitute all of those longer expressions for P1, 2, and P3, and for the determinant. So thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and I hope this has helped you to be able to handle your signal flow graph, to be able to find your transfer function no matter what signal flow graph you're given. See you in the next video.